Yeah, bring it on in there. There bring we go. Yep. Everybody yep. working? Mic check. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody working, sounds good. Working fucking good. Here I am. <laughs> Podcast like a hurricane. <laughs> Are you ready, baby? Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. Well, I guess we're started then, huh? Welcome to another episode of uh, To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you give us a like, subscribe, ring the bell, follow us on social media, check us out on Patreon, PayPal, help support all that good stuff. Today on the podcast, I am uh, very excited to uh, introduce Killfeather. Hola, senor. How you guys Hello, doing? world. Doing great, man. How about yourself? It's oh. good to see you. It's good to be back. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's good to have you guys here, man. And it's good to be starting like the third season of this freaking thing I'm doing. I can't believe it. It's ridiculous. Awesome. Uh, you came all the way up from San Diego, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah. How's life in the How's life in California treating you? Um, it's a lot different than Las Vegas for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. it's, it's a lot quieter out there. Like I, I feel like in my neighborhood, I'm the I'm the neighborhood weirdo now. You know, because everyone's like playing with their kids and outside, like throwing the football around and like there I am screaming in my house recording vocals and shit. <laughs> like, oh, you know, but uh but it's nice, man. I mean the weather's beautiful. It's uh got a really cool bustling scene out there. Um so just, you know, trying to make my way. And uh it's it's definitely a big change of pace than, you know, like the the busyness of Las Vegas. You okay. know, like here it's like every day you can kind of get into something. Oh, there yeah. you have to you have to find time to do stuff. You know what I mean? Like especially because a lot of things are a lot farther. So you know, you know, you're talking about driving thirty minutes in any direction really to get to anything. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh it's just, you know, it's a lot quieter of a lifestyle. Like you have to kind of seek out the weirdos. You know what I mean? Opposed to here, it's like, oh, weirdo, weirdo. You know what I mean? <laughs> but out there it's like you have to like go to certain shows and, and hangouts and stuff like that and just kind of been exploring and you know getting my feel for uh the traffic and the you know like you have to you have to have really good time management which i severely lack um i am everywhere all at once you know what i mean type thing so it's like i uh have to like plan my stuff out you know like plan my day out and and uh make sure i'm not crazy late to every uh, last <laughs> gathering you know what i mean yeah, man, and uh, and the traffic is ridiculous in California. I know San Diego is yeah. not quite as bad as L.A., man. No, but, uh, it's weird. Like it's every county, county, every county in California is like a different state. It really is. Like yeah. you, you cross from San Diego and you go over to L.A. Because I've made that drive a couple times, and it's so different. You know, like San Diego is really laid back, and everyone's kind of just like you know beach lifestyle, right? But then you get to L.A. and it's still very much that city vibe where everyone's like crammed together. You know what I mean? So it, it, it definitely is like more wide open spaces. And the traffic's weird because it's like it's just the sheer amount of people. Like, you know, like we have traffic here and it's because of an accident or because of like the roads are being repaired, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Out there, it's just the sheer amount of cars on the road that oh, it yeah. just you get yeah. congestion in certain areas. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Out here, it's because of uh, traffic. uh you know, they're redoing all the roads. Yeah, yeah constantly. Every, exactly. Every year. Yeah. It's like, well, it's summer's over. All the roads have melted. Let's work on them until <laughs> the Christmas. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's beautiful, though. It's a lot better than, uh, like, I come from uh, Stockton, California. I'd go home to visit, man, and the roads would just be dilapidated. Oh, dude. Man, just yeah. potholes everywhere. There were just right. chunks of concrete falling off the side into the, you know, dirt. Ooh, and, yeah. And it's just like, man, when's the last time anybody gave a shit about any of these roads? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. So, uh, yeah, San Diego's awesome, though. I, I used to live in San Diego. Really? Yeah, I was like uh, 19 to 21. Nice. I was in San Diego, and it was great. I mean, we were dirt freaking poor. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I was, like, driving a forklift for Walmart. You right. Know? But uh, four of us living in a one-bedroom apartment, that whole lifestyle. But yeah. It yeah, was beautiful. I feel like dirt poor in San Diego is, like, filthy rich in Iowa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, the, my apartment was like, I think eleven, twelve hundred dollars $1,200 yeah. for yeah. like a one bedroom apartment. Yeah. And, uh, and between the four of us, we were able to get that paid off and still have plenty of, uh, money left over to buy whiskey every day. Right. Which is the, probably the biggest yeah. priority. Exactly. Well, I'll tell you right now, <laughs> living in America ain't cheap folks. <laughs> when you're drunk, you forget how small the room is you're in. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. None of that shit matters. Mm -mm. Not at all. Yeah, man. We, uh, fucking San Diego. <laughs> yeah. It's we, nice though, man. I, I'm, uh, I, I 
also had the opportunity, like you know, to find a better uh, better pay out there. You know, even despite yeah. the fact that cost of living is a little higher, still I got a better job, and you know, being able to kind of occupy my time with that. My lady found a really good job out there, so she's been like you know hustling and bustling in the in the law scene out there. You know oh, what I mean? Nice. And um, San Diego law, San Diego law, free the whales. Well, <laughs> San Diego law. It's a it's not a lot of maritime law, but you know we're gonna get there. Well, I'm happy for you. I'm yeah. glad you like it out there. Thanks, man. As I much as I miss you, I'm still happy for you. I know. I miss you guys, too, dearly. Yeah. I'm going a little crazy. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. going a little stir crazy, like, just because it's, once again, you have to plan your day out. So it's like af- after work or after, like, I still have boxes I'm unpacking. You know what I mean? And it's like at the end of the day and I'm, like, looking at shows. And I'm like, oh, this band's in town. Like, everyone always has a stop in San Diego. All the bands you want to see are going to come to San Diego. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, it's like every time I see a show pop up, I'm just like, exhausted beat and I'm like man I really got to find the energy because I'm just sitting at home like recording stuff and and like trying to like plan stuff out you know dabbling with with talking to promoters and venues and PR agents and stuff like that out there and um just going stir crazy not being able to like jam like we were jamming a lot you know we would do two mm-hmm. three times a week sometimes yeah so it's like now that I'm I'm away and also our bass player Ben he's always in Phoenix doing his uh, he works as a cover musician so he does a lot of you know gigging work out there um we just you know haven't gotten to practice or record we started a record that you know we were going to start recording and you know that just kind of fell through because the studio uh we at had some circumstances that um you know disabled mm-hmm. us from being able to finish and you know since then we just we have to be able to plan more and uh you know just kind of twiddling my thumbs like oh man i need to jam you know yeah. <laughs> basically now i feel like we're just kind of preparing for the opportunity whenever the opportunity comes up yeah because absolutely. it's going to it's yeah. Inevitable. Yeah. The opportunity is going to come up. So as long as we're ready for whatever, it's just kind of like, all right, we can do some studio time. Yeah. Then we'll have something to record, physically be ready to record it and all that jazz and right. do what we can. And then just also be ready for when shows pop up. You know, we're still getting offers and we're still getting like, like, you know, um, just opportunities that will, will come along in time. And, uh, you know, right now, too, it's, a, it's like a singles market. You know what I mean? So like when we were really looking at like, oh, let's let's get some songs down and recorded. Let's make a video. Let's uh, put it out. Let's promote it. It's kind of like nowadays when you're giving people a whole record all at once, it's like they don't really have the the perception or the time to really, really soak it in. You know, a lot of people. You or know the what attention I mean? span. Or the attention span. Exactly. It's all Spotify playlists now. Mm-hmm. So it's oh, like, yeah. you know, you got to get that one song that gets people interested. Then they'll go check out the record. So what we've kind of been thinking, especially in like the past year or two, like during this whole pandemic, like what are we going to do to be able to get people more interested in our music? Okay, let's take one song. Let's make it, let's, let's jam it. Let's polish it. Let's make it, you know, perfect to our tastes. Let's go record it in a dope studio. Let's get really good recording. Uh, let's make a video for it. You know what I mean? Like these are step-by-step processes opposed to how I've usually done it in the past is like, here's four records. And people are like, dude, I still haven't listened to your first one. And it's like, no offense, but I don't have that kind of time. You know, I'm too busy listening to Cardi B and Drake that I can't really like fathom listening to anything else you know my time is occupied by by my daily spotify playlist you know what i mean that it's it seems to be translating a little bit better um giving people little bits of information at a time because then they're like oh i want more oh cool i want more instead of giving them way too much they can handle their plate usually stays full you know what i mean i also like it too because you're um you know going into the studio and recording a full record not only is it time consuming to record 10 to 12 songs that are on there, but you also got to mix and master and do all that stuff afterwards Yeah, and uh, put it up on there. But when you're doing one song at a time, you can kind of put it out and see if it resonates with the people and see if that's the direction you want to keep going in. Totally. You know, it's kind of like, hey, you you like the way this tastes? Cool. I'll make a whole batch of them. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and not to mention that brings up a good point by saying like, you know, more often than not when you, you have a band and you guys are coming up with ideas together, you know, and you know, you you haphazardly then get those songs recorded. Always, in my experience, you listen to it a year later and go, man, I don't play it like that anymore. Oh, yeah. The song is different. Like, we, we jammed it. We hashed it out. We, we melded our, you know, our visions together. It's a different song now. You know what I mean? And, we'll, like, we've done a couple recordings where we recorded the song and we went, man, no, it's different now. We have a better mm-hmm. jam of it. We have a better tempo of it. You know what I mean? And, you know, more often than not, as you 
especially know you could you could doctor and fix pretty much anything you know if something's a little too slow or something's not the right kind of you know swing or something you could kind of you know mess with that a little bit but it's different than we went to the studio and we played together man you know we recorded everything all at the same time of course then i layered vocals and solos and all that weird extra yeah. bullshit on top you know um, just to make myself feel better at the end of the day. But like the essential recording, the meat and potatoes of it is us in the studio looking at each other, getting the cues. Mm -hmm. You know, like we went in, we recorded a song and a music video at the same time. So it was like when it was going to mix and it was going to master and we were syncing up the video, everything was just perfect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it was like, that's the take that we recorded. That's the take we played on the recording. And it's like, it just makes things so streamlined and so much easier. And I think kind of what we were talking about before, b before the podcast started is like people are really kind of, I think, syncing up more in tune with that organic, that organic art, you know, or, 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 or organic food or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like people are really, I think, getting kind of tired of the same old song and dance. You know what I mean? To where the, you have that option. Hey, man, you want that 99 cent McDonald's cheeseburger? You have that option all day, 24 hours a day. But you only have the option to see like a really good band or get a really good meal. I always put those things in comparison with each other. Like that, that I can't, you can't say one time, but you know what I mean? Like, like you get, it's an experience. It's something that you want to take in. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like when you own a record, it's because you want that record. You know what I mean? It's not because like, oh, every house in in Britain has Dark Side of the Moon. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, no, it's because people actually want to listen to it. It's not like some just some art piece that you put on the wall. You know, and I think it's it's kind of translating more nowadays, especially because everyone's been so cooped up and everyone's kind of, you know, so um, shy of, of what is proper and what to do. Can we shake hands? Can we fucking kiss on the mouth? You know what I mean? Like, oh, we um, can. Oh, we can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you and I won't, but right, right. people in general, there's someone out there we can't. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, it's. I think that you know. Once again, when you when you take it back to that, and then you go, okay, we're gonna do a song, and you listen to it, and you got to go, okay, well, how does it make us feel? Mm -hmm. Makes us feel good. That's gonna translate to other people. P other people will pick up on that. Opposed to you know, okay, we just we slap some stuff together in a studio. I mean, hey, man, for all intents and purposes, that's good in a in a certain circumstance but when you're trying to break into some I, I dare I say commercialism or dare I say success or you want Spotify to pay attention to you you got to have things that people like you mm -hmm. know what I mean not you have to have that find that middle ground where your artistic merit also meets eh, palatability yeah you know yeah and like the sound like the sound of the times almost right right like, yeah it, you know every year every few years decades you know it's like everything starts shuffling changing mm -hmm. and there's like a there's a, a definitely a, a a sound that people get into yeah that, and i defines it if you're open-minded enough i think you can do exactly what you want but also be aware of what's going on with i let's just say the masses just to right. make it easy be aware of what everyone's listening to and be like okay i'm not going to do exactly that but how can i take my style and bring this style a little bit into it whether it's you're using a certain tone, you're using a certain progression or something like that, or, um, but I feel you should, if you really want to be serious and, you know, do this as a career, you should find your niche, niche, and uh, go towards that. But you should also realize that this is your version of that, you know, don't just like, oh, they did this, let's do that exact same thing. Well, they did this. Let's, how are we going to make this ours, though? How are we going to make it stand out a little bit different, but make it still sound like, like oh, I kind of like that and whatnot. Yeah, a nice and blend of it. Everyone, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the challenge of it, I think. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And the fun challenge of it. Right. you got to stand out amongst all mm -hmm. that noise that's exactly. going on, man. Dude, totally, because everyone's always thinking about, like, how could we be the next X, Y, or Z? Man, I want to be the next whatever why yeah. not be the next why not be the first you why not yeah. be the only you there is you know what i mean and i think that that is is becoming more and more prevalent especially today's kind of cultural economy i should say because you know just for lack of better example coming up especially in las vegas you know gigging and and grinding teeth and trying to get 50 bucks out of the promoter at the end of the night you know what i mean like doing that for fucking 20 years man and then like you know you have to like have that 
acceptance of like, don't try to fit into the mold. The mold is there. The mm-hmm. road is there. It's been paved already. You know what I mean? By people before you. Yeah. So if you're going to just put on their costume, that's, that's all it's going to be. That's all it's going to pay out to be. But like, you know, for a long time, I for coming up and out here, I tried to get the attention of the, the publications and the radio stations and the booking agents. And it was, I had a lot of great opportunities. Don't get me wrong, but it was also a very uphill battle. Um, because I think that we tried to fit into a thing, you know, like we were a jam band and then we were a metal band and then we were a, a stoner rock band. And like we tried to fit into these little categories where it'd be like, hey, if we play this type of music, if we turn down to drop D and just go jun, 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 jun for five minutes, then we could play with X, Y and Z band when they come to town. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? And no one it seemed to no one really like cared or paid attention because it was like this this niche type of thing not everyone likes stoner rock not everyone likes heavy metal but like everyone seems to like lady gaga you know what i mean <laughs> like like let's be fucking real you know oh, yeah. what i mean so um well even lady gaga is constantly changing what she's evolving. doing you know totally. what i mean like absolutely. there's never i don't even think she wears the same dress twice no absolutely yeah. not yeah. yeah she wears it once and then it gets hung up in some museum somewhere yeah you know exactly what I mean? like, I mean, you should do that as an artist though you absolutely. should absolutely change as you get older because i'm look at know, bowie yeah bowie right. and all that stuff it's just kind of like i mean who would want to be that person that literally writes the same album over and over and over again it's right like, if you're just doing that you're just this is just all about the money for you and right. there's Nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to be and all that stuff, but you're just kind of like really capitalizing it, not pushing yourself. You're not challenging, you know, what people want to listen to and all that stuff. The thing I really like about when Kevin and I jam together is we'll just sit down and do whatever we want, literally do whatever we want. Like he'd said, stoner rock, metal band, jam band, um, and then maybe some like folk stuff. We will do all of that in one set because that's just like, oh yeah, we wrote this song. Yeah, that one's good. We had like three versions of Say Like a Folk Song. We'll pick the one we like the most. Right. If something doesn't feel right during the practice, we'll be like, yeah, it was a good song, but we don't need to do anything with it. You know, yeah. we wrote it and all that stuff. There's not really a feeling behind it or anything like right. that. And we were just, we we literally don't record or don't play sh- songs live that we're not fully stoked about. Right. Like everything we play live, we're just like, this is absolutely us. We love this song. Right. You know. Yeah, and that's taking the time to be like, oh, man, oh, here's this part. Okay, man, this part, it's dragging out too long. We liked it a couple practices ago. Mm-hmm. Now that we're playing it, ah, let's fucking, let's cut it in half. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and you just, once again, going back to what I was saying before about like formulating a, a song, man. What is best for the song? Yeah. Fuck who wrote it. You know what I mean? Fuck who came up with the melody. We could all fucking whistle a little melody. Like, it's about what serves the song, what mm-hmm. makes us feel good, what makes us think that other people are... Like, like we're, we wrote a bunch of songs, and then we went and played them live, and now people are singing them word for word, and they're not even out. That's amazing. And it's like, holy shit. Like, last night we played a show, and people are in the crowd are singing all the words, and I'm like... I, there's no lyrics online. There's no song that they could get, like a couple of them, you know, mm-hmm. a couple of the singles we've put out. Yeah, and he pronounces his words in the songs like, okay, so they're really listening if they know the, <laughs> exactly. they know the lyrics. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it's, um, but going back to what I was saying before, is like, you know, trying to come up here and trying to, trying to get into the attention of people, you know, it was kind of hard when you're trying to fit into a niche market. It wasn't until that I started like literally just dropping everything and just putting fart noises on my records that then people were like, oh my God, this is cool. We want to write about it. It's that, oh, it's you know. that whole like, screw it. I'm just going to do whatever I want. Yep, and exactly. then, and then people notice because we go up on stage and they're like, they're playing what they like. Right. There's energy behind each person on their instrument right there. Like I'm back there on the drums, flailing my arms in every direction. Right. Playing it as, Covered in sweat by the end of the show. Kevin's sitting up there. He's got his guitar above his head doing a freaking <laughs> solo. And whoever's in the front row just right in their face. Just like, right. you like those fingers in your nose, buddy? <laughs> even Ben. Even Ben, who's like a yeah. very like uh, tame person. Mm-hmm. He even gets up there. And st- you like you see his stank yeah. face. And he starts rocking out. Yeah. And it's like, dude, he feels it, man. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. there's there, you see a lot of those bands who clearly are up there because they want to make it or they want to have success or they don't want to work. They don't want to wake up at 6 a.m. and have to go work for the man. You know what I mean? To where they get an instrument and they play. But you could tra- it translates when they're just standing there. And they're just kind of like, yeah, hey, whatever. This is it. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you need to have that 
enthusiasm. You need to enjoy what you do. And you also then need to um, be willing to open up and say, hey, this is for you as well. Mm-hmm. This isn't just for us. Yeah. But but it is, but it isn't. You know, like like once again, we do what we want and we got to feel good about what we do. Or yeah. else at the end of the day, you, you what, a year goes by, two years go by, and then – Oh man, all that hard work, all the albums, all the recordings, all the shows, all of it goes down the drain because you 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 didn't really enjoy what you did. You tried to fit into this road or this mold or like, what are we going to do to to get viral on TikTok? Like yeah. fuck fuck TikTok. So you I, know what I mean? Like I think how it feels it's like a lot of people are just trying to like, oh, this is popular right now. Let's do this. For me, it's always been all right. I played this on the last record because this is how good I am. This is what I'm capable of. That's it's almost like each record I've been a part of is like a journal for me or like a photo book of like, this is how good I was at this time. Yeah, let's listen to that. Oh, I knew all that. And then the next record you listen to is like, oh, I obviously learned a little bit more because I'm doing something a little bit harder on there. And that's how I, I play music is just trying to push myself, do something harder than what I did before. Right. You know, just try and of course, be better and better on every record that goes along. And personally playing live, you know, I like performing for people that want to see me. You know, if you want to see it, okay, cool. Yeah, here it is. But for me, for me, why I play music is because I'm just a musician and I'm trying to see how far I can take this, how good I can get personally and all that stuff. And once it gets to the point where I feel like I've plateaued and gotten to that, like, all right, I'm not going to get above this. I really don't feel like I need to play live, but if people are still asking, I will go out and do that for the people. Yeah, I'll do this for you, all these all these songs and stuff, put a little showman on there. I wanna make sure you're entertained by the end of the show. But I'm also very, very hard on myself if there's any kind of mistakes and I think about that. I'll listen to everyone's like, hey, great show, Mike, great show. And, and my, I was like, I missed a lot of snare hits. Thank you. Thank you. Like, I learned to just yeah. say thank you and move on. But that rudiment in minute three was fucked, but it's okay. Don't, yeah. But literally, like, literally the next, no the next... one walks off stage going, like, yeah. perfect show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just not happening. I mean, and maybe Ingve, you... but yeah. you know, whatever. Yngwie told well, me. I, even, uh, I even like to bring up. Um, um, God damn it! What's the bass player's name? Billy Sheehan. Oh yeah, we had Billy Sheehan at Vamped a lot, right? Yeah. And uh, me and him, bass players, we start talking shop uh, and start hitting off right away, which is awesome for me. But uh, he, he would come off stage, Billy Sheehan, like mm-hmm. one of the best bass players alive, and he crushed it. And he would be like, Ah, but right. this one spot here, and then you know yeah. I did all right, but yeah. then there's like, and I was like, even that fucking guy, right. no one does it if yeah. he's not doing it. No one's doing it, yeah. you know what I mean? And he's still beating himself up. I think that's coming great, off though. the stage, yeah. you know. Yeah. I just, I always like to say, like it's like it's it's an impossible thing to walk out and mm-hmm. and nail it like that, yeah. where you're like, oh, I have, just like the record. <laughs> but I like that too because, like, I come off of a show, and if I have some mistakes and stuff like that, I'm just like, all right, that's what I got to practice for the next two weeks. Yeah, yeah. that's what I got to sit there and do for two hours every day until it's just basically in the back of my head. Oh, of course, right. complete muscle memory. Well, and two is like art is is expressionary. It's mm-hmm. a form of expression. Like to me, you know, I love the the old adage from Frank Zappa. I'm like a solo is not supposed to be cookie cutter. It's supposed to be something different every time. Like that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, because it's supposed to be your your emotive expression. Like yeah, okay, cool. You want to go like see the band and you want to hear it exactly how it is on the record. I get that in a certain extent. Like if I'm paying the the eight hundred dollars to go see Clapton, mm-hmm. you know, I don't really care about him fucking soloing for fifteen minutes. I want to hear fucking cocaine and I'm gonna go home. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> but that's also in a certain setting. Like I, I mean, like once again, you have to really separate the form of commercialism and the form of of artistry because at a certain point they do come together and they do meet and it can be a harmonious balance but one or the other is is too much you know what i mean like you yeah. need to have that balance because like he was mentioning before those bands that just like make the same record every fucking time hey it's working for acdc yeah, you know mm-hmm. what i mean but that's like they they got Walmart record. Their record is sold in Walmart. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's it's not like they're like check out our new groundbreaking record. They're like no, we're ACDC and you're gonna buy it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like well, and, and it's also it becomes uninteresting, right? Because it's right. like well, when I got into that band, yeah. these were the songs I dug. Right. Yeah. All this other stuff sounds exactly like that. So it's not yeah. having impact. Right. I'm not really 
getting it's not getting its hooks into me man yeah. right you know totally. and acdc is a great example another one is like uh cannibal corpse oh yeah and they're like kind of pigeonholed by their audience right because right. they have to be the baddest death metal band that there ever was yeah mm-hmm. and it's like you there's not a lot of room to experiment there yeah. so it's like they they put out 13 14 albums like probably more now yeah and they they're all like they're fucking awesome, mm-hmm. but at the same time, but it's they're all like, the same level of that's awesome. Cannibal Corpse, right. yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, like the sound that they're stuck in. The songs yeah. are the same, but when it comes to like that death metal stuff, the only thing that really changes is the uh, the technology that comes along with it, like the yeah. sound quality of all the recordings and yeah. stuff like that, you know. Yeah. And so that's the kind of like the thing you can look forward for the death metal. But I get exactly what you're saying with like, yeah, this sounds like a song that was on. <laughs> you know, a, a CD ten years ago, but yeah. it's recorded way better. And it's like I I have mm-hmm. the ones that I like when I was a teenager, where I was into Cannibal Corpse, mm-hmm. and it's like I don't really need to. The new stuff's cool, but right. it's never gonna stick in my brain like Hammer Smashed Face or something. You yeah, know, totally. it's just like that was that was you know. Well, I, when, like don't get me wrong, I, don't get me wrong. I love Led Zeppelin, but like if I want to hear a Zeppelin record, I got it. Yeah, like, I know. Right. It. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm hearing it right now. You That's know what so I mean? True. It's like. Um, but I wanted to say like what I was saying before, like I wanted to kind of go back to saying like what I mean to say by like, fuck TikTok. I don't, for all the TikTok <laughs> executives out there. No, it's, it's serious. Like, like, you know, bands, I think just rely. What I mean by that is like, I think bands rely too heavily on the, like, what's going to get us viral videos right now. What's going to break us and get us the attention. So then people listen to our music. It's mm-hmm. like, I think that you have to have a quality product first yeah. or else you're just going to be the TikTok guy. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and I think people are just trying to cash in quick. That's that has been like that has been pop music's like that's that's been their goal since day one is to make money. It's to get out there and to make money. Of course, things make people feel good. And and who doesn't? Hey, Mrs. Jones, you got a lovely daughter. Yeah, everyone wants to do that. You know, it feel good. Right. Mm, Of course. But once again, I think nowadays, too, it's very hard to be an artist and then also be a salesman, you know what I mean? To where you have these things to where like TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and all those things can be great tools to help you expose your art to a larger art- audience. Yeah, but I feel like the art on TikTok are, um, they're not songs, they're ditties. Totally. They're like lullabies. Right. Totally, you know? but what is a car I've, commercial? It's a ditty. Yeah, but that's, you know? normally those are like pieces of a song totally. that was longer, that was taken and put in there. Like all the Led Zeppelin and stuff like yeah. that. Absolutely. So with TikTok, Never before in my life have I seen so many hit songs that are under two minutes and 30 seconds. Right. Yeah. Like I get the radio songs, but you know, radio songs when we were, we're going to sound like old guys just by saying like, when we were growing up, it was between three to five minutes on That's the radio. That's what happened and to now us, it's man. Like, you know, we stuck around for yeah. so long we became old. Yeah. Because right. I like to, I like to, I like to check on, see what's popular and all that stuff. And I recently looked up, uh. Who does that Gucci Gang song? Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. That song. Oh, yeah. I think it's Gucci like Little Man. Peep or something like that. I, yeah. Little uh, Peep. Little Peep. Shout out to Little Peep. Yeah, but uh, I, I listened to that song. I was like, oh, this song's a minute and 30 seconds. Right. And yeah. it was like the most popular thing in the world. Right. And, and that dude's I, a millionaire. I, I'm, I think he died. <laughs> oh, well, was a millionaire. Exactly. Rest in peace. Yeah. It was a good song, though. Yeah. Anywho, the, the, but yeah, you mean, if anyone's going to take our advice, just do what you like. Just do what you like and don't worry about what other people think. Do what man. you like because the best part about doing what you like and then when you find an audience that responds to it and likes it, you're just like, wow, there's other people out there like me. This oh, yeah. is amazing. Right. This is like, you know, for someone who's maybe like has anxiety and then they like get their outlet through music and then they go and play their music and then someone comes up to them and it's, you know anxiety reliever or something like that there's right absolutely there's it's, it's that argument. validation yeah. of like hey man there are other people in this world that feel the way i do mm-hmm. i thought i was alone i thought i was an alien but oh no it turns out that there are a lot more people that think this way and yeah, maybe i'm just like there's a lot more myself. aliens yeah there's a lot more aliens mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and it's like oh, it's all about having fun man right? mm-hmm. whenever you're up there enjoying yourself everybody enjoys you themselves sh- you absolutely and it really it. reflects because it's like an energy exchange whenever you're playing live with a crowd in front of you man mm-hmm. You know, they're feeding off your energy, you're feeding off their energy, yeah. and they, it, it reflects, man. You know, the shows where there's five people in the crowd, those aren't exactly the most memorable, mm-hmm. best shows where you're coming off stage going, fuck, this is what I do yeah. it for, you yeah. know, and right. it's because there's not that exchange of energy from a big crowd of people who are also expressing themselves in front of you. Yeah. And uh, and that makes it makes all the difference in the world. It was like the Cracker Man band that I did, you know, like we weren't up there 
changing the history of music or anything you know we were doing three chord progression punk rock songs mm -hmm. that were just and smashing guitars but we were having so much fun yeah right and at, it encouraged other everyone else to have as much fun as they can too mm -hmm. it's addictive people see yeah. that it's like it's a it's uh infectious yeah. people see you having a good time and they're like oh cool it's like a weird thing like if you're in a crowded room and something happens and you clap, other people look at you and then they start clapping. You know what I mean? It's yeah. monkey see, monkey do. But I think that's just like a kind of product of our um, social evolution is that, you know, we kind of have to have that validation from our peers to go, OK, cool. I feel this way, too. You know what I mean? And now, like you had mentioned before, the artistic expression, like that's we get those things out and we perform and we write and we do these things because we have these feelings and we don't know how to necessarily compute them intelligently through conversation you know what i mean so we're like you know we we're reclusive and we write songs and we're you know we're angsty and we're like so tormented you know what i mean <laughs> but then when you get out there and you play and you perform and you know it took me um, a really long time to realize like people just want to dance man people just oh, want to yeah. have a good time like they're not trying to suck your dick at the end of the show but <laughs> you know i mean it may happen once in a while but but you know what i'm saying like it's not that it it that's that's not the goal people once again they don't care about like a, an obsessionary thing they want to know you and have your autograph no man they just want a good time they want to hear a mm -hmm. good song they want to you know be around friendly people and getting back to that as a performer and realizing like yeah i'm a songwriter yeah i have albums and i have songs but also I am also a performer to where I just like being able to play in front of people and, and see like when I, when I play and those vibes come out of my guitar and it hits a person and then they feel it and they start moving. It's like, there's, there's something about that. That's just so out of this world, man. You know, like I don't get that feeling from much other things in life performing. Like if I make a record, I love it. And then people will listen to it and I love it. Great. But it doesn't fill me with that like energy. You know what yeah. I mean? Like when I get on stage, like, man, I kind of just like black out. I just, I just do what I do. Mm -hmm. I, people ask me all the time, like, why do you do this? Why do you make these faces? Why do you, <laughs> why do you throw your guitar around like that? And that's like, where it went. That's yeah. just how it happened. That's you know where I, I mean? ended up. Right. Started exactly. playing, started feeling it. Next thing you know, oh, next thing here. you know, my pants are off. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, back like, to back with the bass, bass player, stick my tongue out at the drummer. <laughs> drummer sticking his tongue back out at me. We look at the crowd. Everyone's got their tongue out. Right. <laughs> Infectious grooves. Yeah, <laughs> that's it too, man. You know, I've never played a show and walked off stage and not been like that just happened right you know i've been looking forward to that all week long and it's like over yeah mm -hmm. you know exactly. even a big one man whenever it's like 70 90 minute set right it's still like are we already on this song right now yeah. like this is it i better take a deep breath and enjoy this experience while i'm up here because right. i got two songs left absolutely dude yeah. we started getting into the we started getting into the three or four hour sets oh, wow. and we were like kind of like holy fuck dude we're gonna cover four hours and then like four hours go by and we're like I feel great, dude. Yeah. I yeah. feel fucking great. Oh, we're man. already on the last set. That just flew by. I can right. barely remember set number two. Yeah. Like, I've played 30-minute sets where after the show, I was puking and crying. My mascara's running. My fishnets are just ripped. You know what I mean? Like, I'm wrecked. My life is over. I'm wrecked because I exuded too much energy. But then you learn how to channel it, and you learn how to really, like you know, be a performer. And then those four hour sets go by and you're like, man, I'm ready to like stay up and do another one. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, it's real hard to go to sleep anywhere within four hours of doing a long set like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. It gets you, man. It gets you. So you guys have a show coming up too, right? You guys are doing the uh, soul belly barbecue uh, with wizard and stoner. Yeah, man. Uh, soul belly on March 10th, uh, I believe it's a Thursday and uh, soul belly barbecue is a, a relatively new venue downtown on Main Street. Yeah, I've never even heard of um, it. And they've got like a stage in there, and I've seen a you know a couple Fucking videos out. and uh, promotion things where like you know it seems like a good place. People talk about their barbecue. I'm excited to get myself on some some pulled pork. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm a brisket man myself. Yeah, yeah. I got a belt buckle that says so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's gonna be the next gig. Um, us Wizard Stoner. Um, stoners featuring Brant Bjork from Caius and Nick Oliveri from Queens of the Stone Age and the Dwarves. Um, oh, so that, fun. Sh that should be a really fun show. Nice. Yeah, and I just pulled up their little uh, venue page here, man. Looks like they got a cool spot going on. Okay. Little Belly Barbecue, little brick wall stage. Yep. Grooving. Well, that's, uh, that was the Rye Light sound. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at Larry. What up, Larry? Oh. Good old Larry. Shout out. Electric Larry Land. 
Larry's the man. That's a good dude right there. Nice. Yeah. And uh, they're open now. Outdoor patio. Cool, man. Soul Belly Barbecue, March 10th. Looking forward to it, man. That's cool. But yeah, that's going to be a Pulsar present show. Um, oh, yeah. And, we just have Pulsar. And you could uh, find tickets, I think, at like brown paper tickets. Just search uh, Stoner in Las Vegas and that will come up. <laughs> <laughs> Stoner. Now, is that... Is that Masonette? Is that Stoner dude doing that, or is that a different, whole different thing? Stoner, I don't know. You don't I, know? Don't, I don't think it is. I think yeah. it's uh, a new thing. A new thing, huh? Yeah, new band from Heavy Psych Sounds Records. Oh, cool. So are they? They're not from Vegas, or uh... Uh, no? Stoner, I think, is from Cali. Somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, that is fun. I will be out of town, but I. Uh... Wish I could come see you guys play, man. Dude, I you'll be there in spirit. I'll mm-hmm. be there in spirit for sure, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that live's, live music's coming back, and I got to really get out and enjoy it and yeah. participate and uh, pay some cover charges and support some local music because right. that's where it all comes from, man. You know, it's always about supporting the local scene. Yeah, we played a show last night, and going out, I just I was just kind of thinking, I was like, when was the last time I was out at a local show? And I was just like, yeah. I couldn't even remember. Couldn't even, oh, I think I went and, no, I can't remember. Still can't remember. <laughs> huh. Not even going to try. Dude, it was a really good show, though, man. I mean, a lot of people came out. Mm-hmm. We played with a local band called The Cheeks. Um, and, oh, yeah. And we played with uh, my buddy Jeff Westy's band, who used to be in my old band, Jack and the Beefish, his new band, Far Out Underground Rainbow. Um, and it was it was really fun, man. You know, like, there's a lot of people came out to support, and everyone sounded great. You know what I mean? It was just like one of those nights where everything clicked. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And, uh it was really good to see everyone. Again. Yeah, absolutely. I saw yeah. I saw probably four different people I used to play in bands with from four different <laughs> bands, and I was like, "Hey, how you been? How's all these guys?" And right. you know, just seeing everyone still doing their thing, and loved seeing that everyone was still into music, into rock and roll. That everyone I talked to was just like, "Yeah, I got a project coming out. We're about to we've got about a set coming up. We're gonna yeah. start playing shows. We're gonna start recording." And I was just like, "Cool." That's awesome. Cool. Man, Vegas is so incestuous. It's You know oh, yeah. what I mean? Like, everyone has been in bands with everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. So It's just a city filled with entertainers, man. It's right. hard not to do that kind of stuff. Exactly. Man. Pretty sure there was one time when I was playing in four bands at once. Yeah, dude. Right. As a drummer, I don't doubt it. Man. Mm-hmm. You know? I had a lot of energy. Yeah. A good drummer is hard to come by, man. Right. Even in a city like Vegas. Yeah. You know? And that's like everything. Yeah. If your drummer sucks, I don't like your band. Yeah, that's totally. The, 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 I can't, you can't dance to a bad drummer. Right. So. You know, True. and you can't groove to a bad drummer, man. And I, I've, at this point, I'm not even going to play with a, a guy who's, <laughs> they can't play drums, man. I'm yeah. like, I'm not good enough to, to, to keep up with your shitty drumming anymore, man. Right. We don't have that kind of time. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, man, it's ridiculous. But it is, it's really everything, man, that rhythm section, man. That's mm. where that groove comes Absolutely, from. Absolutely, man. Man, I see guitar players all the time and like, Guitar bores the fuck out of me. You know what I mean? Like, especially nowadays, everyone's yeah. all into the same kind of mode. You know what I mean? Like, people, and, and don't get me wrong, they're really talented players. I, I can't deny that. But still, like, I don't care that you could sweep, dude. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. a thousand people could do it. I don't really care. Like, it doesn't <sighs> offer me anything. But a good rhythm section, oh, dude, you could just have a rhythm section up mm-hmm. there and I'll feel it. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, I dig that, man. That's exactly it right there. So you guys have a bunch of new singles coming out too, right? Uh, These or, are already, already released, came out. Yeah. I know Bummer was the last one I saw that came out, uh, but also I have uh, the Safety Dance video pulled up uh, off the front of your website, which I don't know, I give your mm-hmm. website a little shout out here. Go check out uh, kkillfeather.com. They got all kinds of good stuff. Uh, and a link to their latest music video, mm-hmm. uh, which... The funnest music video I've ever been a part of. It was yeah, by the time. Fun. It was just straight fun. So and one you, of my favorite music videos back in the day was uh, Steal My Sunshine by Lynn. Yeah. And they basically just cruised around drinking Slurpees riding Vespas. <laughs> and I was just like, man, that looks gr- that looks like a great idea. So I always had the idea. I was just like, I just want to do a music video where we're like riding around on Vespas. I don't, you know, we'll just hang out and ride Vespas and shoot a music video. And uh, we, Kevin was the only person that I've ever worked with that was just like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. Right. And it was fu- like it was fun. It was legitimately like dude, we rode around the city and mm-hmm. just like 
cruised around while our buddy was like hanging outside the back of a car filming us. Yep. And like, we were on downtown Fremont. We cruised to the arts district, and there was one point where I saw one of my friends that was just like walking around in the arts district, and he just <laughs> he leans over and goes, "Mike, what's up?" And I was like, "Yo," I'm sitting yeah. there like revving up his Vespa like an idiot, yeah. and I'm just like, "Yeah, we're just shooting a music video." And he was still walking at this time. He was like, "All right, cool." Yeah. And then he walks straight into a pole. Oh. <laughs> ah. Boom! All his friends started laughing at him. No, Damn. that was a good time. Man. Yeah, that would have been good to get on camera. Oh, I wish we did. Yeah, but there's actually a point in the music video you see me throw my hand up and look oh, to the yeah. left. That's when he was shouting out at me around the pole. So that's funny. There's a little Easter egg for you guys to look for in the music video. That's awesome, man. Look at this ridiculous guy. Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Yeah. So during the pandemic, I was safety dance was always like a really <laughs> A song that I always loved. It was the first song I ever sang in karaoke, and the music video is iconic. And uh, during the pandemic, I was listening to it, and uh, basically, I was listening to the lyrics, and I was like, this is like, almost like a protest song. We can dance if we want to. We can yeah. leave your friends behind. You know, we can go where we want to, and all that stuff. And I was like, this is perfect for the pandemic. Oh, yeah. You know, because everyone's trying to keep you inside and say you can't do stuff and whatnot. And, you know, I just thought, slow it down a little bit and make it our own. And kind of worked out. Wearing a Reaper's Grip shirt in there. My friend's uh, skateboard grip tape company. Oh, Shout nice. out to Dana. Yeah, it's funny, too, because we were playing gigs, like, you know, before this and, like, just thinking about, like, ah, oh, man, what what could we do? Let's, like, think of a cool cover we could do, man, you know, and, like, make it our own kind of. We were playing a show and like this was when it first kind of the pandemic kind of first started hitting and we were at a show and someone was like sitting down and they got up out of their seat and they just started to move a little bit. You know what I mean? And the security guard came up and was like, no, you can't do that. It was like, dude, what? Are we, Come on. Are we living in the movie Footloose? Yeah, right. Because this is the movie Footloose. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to go to jail for dancing. No dancing. Right. Uh... So also, yeah, fun fact, this, that point. this track was recorded by the much elusive Chad Froberg. Yeah, I was about to say, my brother's like private studio, you guys. Yeah, man, mm-hmm. it's such a blast, dude. It's such a blast being able to record this. I mean, we we actually played this for Chad. So he came to a show. We were doing a thing over at AV Vegas. They had oh, let yeah. us, they had let us uh, use their stage. They had a big old stage, big LED back backdrop. And, um, and, uh, Chad was, you know, doing our sound and we were kind of just messing around and doing some like covers. Mike's buddy had come in town. So we were like doing corn covers and like, Mm -hmm. you know, just like kind of messing around. And we ended up playing that song and Chad was just up there like, dude, that's a a fire version of that song. And we were like kind of just like we were just dabbling with it. You know what I mean? Just kind of like for fun. And uh, he ended up being like, dude, come to my place, man. We got to record this track, you know, and, and Mike had been going over there doing some drum stuff. And we ended up just like doing a cut of it and being like, holy fuck, this sounds good, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's, let's work on it. And we worked on it, worked on it and just like got everything down and kind of going back to what we were talking about in the beginning, being able to sit there and go, all right, cool. Here's the version. Here's here's mix one. Listening to mix one going, ah, oh, what does this middle section need? Ah, oh, we need a little like organ in there or like mm-hmm. a little moog or something in there. You know what I mean? Putting that in then going, ah, oh, man, what is this missing? And then the ba- my bass player Ben's like, slide guitar, dude. So it starts sliding. And it's just like everything just started to come together. Oh, that like, was Ben's call to slide guitar? That was Ben's call to slide, dude. Good call, Ben. Good, Good call, call. Ben. Executive uh, decision on Ben's mm-hmm. part. But yeah, man, I mean, that was a, uh, that was a fun one. And then, so we ended up doing the track. Um, it we, was actually easy to do too, because like yeah. I had the idea and normally you'll have an idea like as a drummer and you'll try and tell it to a guitar player and you'll have to explain it a lot. When I first described it to Kevin, he was like, here's what I got. And I was like, That's that it. was exactly what I was hearing. <laughs> yeah. And that was one of the good things about like why I actually stayed working with Kevin for so long, because we write songs really well together. When I write a song and come up with it, he's like, yeah, we'll absolutely do that with like no questions asked. Yeah. And because it's just kind of like, we have similar styles, but also kind of like push each other a little bit too to like try something new that we wouldn't think of and whatnot. And I feel like there was just really good writing chemistry uh, behind how we work together. 
Yeah, absolutely. It you was know, simple. Nothing was forced. Totally. And that's the beauty about it, too, is like, you know, more often than not, if you have an idea, like, I mean, like all the singles that, you know, we have like released, some of it is just me um, for my label. And then some of it's stuff that we've written together. Yeah. And like it's like the mountain. Yeah. That's up on there now, yeah, too. The mountain or uh, once in a while mm-hmm. sex. I mean, these are all um, songs that we're like coming up together. And it's, you know if a person just has one vision, it's going to come out a certain way. When you start adding other people to that process, you start to get, you know, you start to get a really flavorful dish. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. instead of just like, okay, you're like, this is my thing and I can, I can make this and like, I, I can play the drum. Sure. I can play the bass. Sure. But I'm not a drummer. I'm not a bass player. Yeah. I could count like, cool. Right. But, um, but that's not going to add flavor and dimension and taste, and taste yeah, exactly man. you know what i mean that's Vibe. gonna be like like that's you know you could do it for your own personal satisfaction absolutely but like creating together man that's there's something a lot different about it than it is just like saying like oh man i've got a song and I, okay i could i could just do the drums to this yeah okay cool i could put bass to that sure but then when you like present it to someone else and they come up with something different and you're like whoa i never even thought that was possible yeah. Like I never thought you could put that beat to this song. Holy fuck, it makes it like a whole a bigger orchestral thing. And especially when you're a three piece band, man, you gotta be creative. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you have to fill, fill in those. the space. Yep. You have to like you have to complement each other's actions and other and their you know, their nuance. You know what I mean? And you know, when like I was saying with, you know, the process of safety dance, man, we, we went in there, we recorded it. It was real easy. It was real natural. And it was so, so much fun to then like hear a part that we did. And like, everyone's giddy, everyone's laughing and everyone's having a great time because it's like, it's something that we were all a part of that we're all, that we're all making together. You know what I mean? And, um, we're all sharing that experience together mm-hmm. for the first time Yeah, because a lot of time in a band, you know, it, Every band has their their main per- person, you know, their main songwriter or their main mm-hmm. visionary or whatever. You know Absolutely. what I mean? But like when you get to feel that feeling at the same time together, it's like it's it's different. It's a different animal because once again, you get that like everyone has different tastes. Everyone has a different favorite band or favorite uh, musician or you know what I mean? So it's mm-hmm. like they're going to put their flavor and their spin on something that you might have overlooked. You know, like Mike listens to a lot of stuff that I don't listen to. I listen to a lot of stuff he doesn't listen yeah, to. I so, listen to everything from like Katy Perry to Cannibal Corpse. And I listen to uh, Captain uh, Beefheart. Like that's pretty much it. You I know like, what I mean? You know so, I like some Beefheart, bro. <laughs> so, so it's like bringing, uh, those, bringing those things together, you not only get that awesome shared experience of like this is um, – it's a, it's a, it's a camaraderie thing. It's like a, it's like, these are my peers. These are my, you know, these are my comrades, but you also get that like exciting thing in music, man. Like we were going back to saying like, yeah, you could write the same album over and over and over again, or you can like have something that's new and exciting and fresh mm-hmm. to people's ears. Like when we're writing a song and we go play it and then there's people dancing. Yeah. It's like, Whoa, dude, that, that immediately translated. I was actually going to mention. So like, I do, I listen to a whole bunch of stuff like jazz, Katy Perry, Cannibal Corpse, like all that stuff, sad emo stuff and all that jazz too. We've, we've been writing sometimes and Kevin's come up with a riff and he's just like, yeah, yeah, I like this. And I'm like, well, that's that song. That's, a, that's already something. Yeah. We're not going to do that. Yeah. You know, and he's just like, ah, and some people just be like, ah, oh, let's do it anyway. But he's just like, eh, got to move on. Already been done before. Right, but it's it's also very difficult to to take any chord progression and say someone hasn't done that chord progression, yeah, but right. taking it and changing it and, and making it your own and your exactly. own timbre and your own rhythm and like yeah. completely, you know, if maybe the guitar parts very similar or the same to something, but it's mm-hmm. like we'll do the drums and the bass and everything yeah. completely different and it'll be at a different pace. Yeah. Cause it's, it's like, Oh, it's so hard to sit there and go, we're going to write something completely unique and original from the 10 billion songs that have been written on the planet. You know? So a fun trick I used to do when I first started like playing guitar and writing my own songs, I would learn certain songs. And I did this specifically with two songs. I remember first doing it with Island in the sun and uh, chop suey by um, system of a down. I basically learned those songs, and I was like, Man, I really like these songs, and I like the chords that they're using. So I just played them backwards. Ha! And it kind of sparked an idea to kind of like change it up, different yeah. melody and different rhythm. 
Like, I didn't end up just playing them backwards and that was my song, but I played them backwards and I was like, oh, and it took me somewhere else to where I made my own song out of it from right. that way. And it was kind of like, I always found that that's been kind of like my fun, creative approach to like writing and stuff like that. Where, how to use influence correctly, as I would like say. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And people's visions are different, you know, like he mm -hmm. was mentioning, you know, you might bring something to the table and go, man, I really like this. And they go, eh, yeah, but it, it sounds like this song. And be like, oh, I've never heard that song before. And then you listen to it and you're like, okay, yeah, it's that song. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think the one that he did, it was The Passenger by Iggy Pop. Oh, yeah. Oh, fine, <laughs> right. <laughs> You really like that? I was like, yeah, it's the passenger. It's like, yeah, dude. That, he was like, what? Yeah, dude, that's really good. That's the passenger. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great song. <laughs> right. Yeah, I've been there more in times than I like to like to admit, man. And it's yeah. like you gotta throw the whole song away. Yeah. It's a little bit frustrating. I had a song for twenty years and found out it was a Beatles song. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> My friend was like, Yeah, it's a Beatles song. He played it for me. And I was like, It is. And I've somehow never heard that Beatles song before. Oh. I look, Probably like subconsciously when I was a child, someone played it in the car. Absolutely. I was going to daycare. Oh yeah, you know. Oh, and they took all the they took all the core rhythms, you know, all mm -hmm. the, all the all that, you know, basic standard writing of music. Mm -hmm. It's just it's all Beatles, man. Yeah. It's hard to get away from any of that. Right. Thanks the Beatles. Oh yeah. Well, and also Nothing's thanks left. Beatles. <laughs> 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 exactly. It's like how how are you gonna how are you gonna think about this? You're gonna go thanks Beatles, or you're gonna go thanks Beatles. Yeah. Oh, they're a trip, man. The Beatles blow my friggin' mind, man. Right? And like the older I get and the more I dive into all this, uh, you know, metaphysical and religious and spiritual and philosophical research that I do, it's mm -hmm. like all of a sudden the Beatles lyrics just start opening up to me, man. And you're like, fuck, were they really talking about this mm -hmm. the whole time? I've been listening to this song my whole life yeah. and I just now get what they're talking about, man. Yeah, yeah. I just thought they were just saying nice things. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just thought they were genuine people and just wanted yeah. to spread love. Yeah, exactly. No, nah, man, I finally sat through that uh, Peter Jackson's Get Back. Oh, I was like, that dude, oh my God. Like, it, it really, like, you know, I, like I heard them. it's three days long. Yeah, it's it's long as fuck. It's it's, it's Peter Jackson. It's like yeah. nine so, hours. I mean, it, okay. it, it's like nine hours. Peter um, Jackson doesn't know how to edit properly. He's yeah. just like, now put it all in there. Yeah. Everything, right? They're eating toast like yeah. half the time. It's just them <laughs> eating toast, like nothing on it, no butter, no jam, just dry <laughs> toast. Like that's what English people do. Um, but no, it's really cool to see like you know a band with that much success and they're at the height of their career. They're pretty much at the end of their career. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, like, we've got two weeks to write and record a record. And you see it real time. Like, you watch Paul McCartney real time write Get Back. And you're like, that song is probably the easiest song ever. But, like, when you listen to it, you're not thinking about the technicality. You're no. not thinking. You're just thinking, like, wow, that's a good fucking song. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And when you watch him just sitting there, he's just like, nim, 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 JoJo, what is him? All right, who's JoJo? All right, where's JoJo from? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then John Lennon comes in, he's like, whatever. And Paul's like, yeah, that's shit. No, I'm not using that. Whatever. And it's like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, to watch them in real time feed off each other and and criticize each other. George Harrison's in the back like, I've got a song. And they're like, shut the fuck up, George. <laughs> you <laughs> get one per record. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, and there's that famous thing with uh, Dave Grawl where he got to write a song with Paul McCartney. Right, and he's like, yeah. man, I wish it could be this easy every time I write a song. And Paul's like, it is. Yeah. <laughs> this right. is how easy it is to write songs. You're, th you're overthinking it. That's what's it really happening is. right you now. Just, right. You just totally. need to tell a story. Yeah. 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 I wrote... I wrote a another song during the pandemic where I was just sitting around and playing this riff. I was like, dun, 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 don't touch your face, dun, 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 don't touch your friends, dun, 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 don't go to work dun, 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 until this ends and turn that turn that whole concept into a whole song. Right. You know? Yeah, once you get the, the core principle of it, man, mm -hmm. or like the chorus, yeah. you know, and right. just, you're, you're you're off to the races at that point. You're yeah. just putting pieces in place and like, this is going to happen by the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of how I am when I write songs. I'm always like, figure out a topic and I kind of want it to be like, you know, I, I want my songs to be like, I have something to say. You know, yeah. here's my little opinion about this. Like, you know, COVID was a real thing. Everything got shut down. It hurt a lot of people, but... I still don't agree with telling people what to do. No. I, you know, I grew up skateboarding on all that stuff. I just don't tell me what to do. I'll stay away from you if you're afraid. I'm not trying to hurt or harm anybody, but like there's a lot of room outside. Yeah. You know, don't tell me to stay inside my, there's a lot of room outside. Oh yeah. 
Oh. Well, that's kind of the uh, that's kind of our our problem as a society these days, man. Is uh, is the whole like uh, I don't have to change my behavior; everyone else has to change their behavior around me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's just not the way the world works, man. Yeah, when people mm-hmm. tell that to me, I go, No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike, you're an adult. You have to do all this. You have to act this way. And I go, No, I don't. <laughs> It's no, I don't. True. Kick flip. <laughs> mm. My <Manali laughs> flip says no. <laughs> I'll be skating till I die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's it's a beautiful thing that is coming to an end, man. Yeah. Let's just say that shit, man. I. Uh, <laughs> However you want to take that phrase, people. Yes, yeah. it's a beautiful thing that it's coming to an end. <laughs> yeah. You know, like uh, I'm 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 over it. I. St- you know, honestly, I stopped wearing my friggin' mask outside of work where they pay me, you, you pay, they're paying me to put a mask on. All right, I'll wear it. Right. I'll wear my mask. Yeah. And it's like, after the second year of this shit, I was like, all right, we're done with this, right? Like, this isn't working. So, so no, now you need four of them. Let's move on with our lives, <laughs> no. you know, and we'll deal with it just like we've dealt with all the other millions of viruses and, uh, you know, bacteria that have been swarming around us our entire yeah. friggin' lives, man. You know, like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, and, you know, I'm all for, like, doing what's right and doing what's best, you know what I mean, and and being safe and all that stuff. But it also, I think that people need positive human interaction. Mm -hmm. Humanity without positive human interaction, like, we're all little recluses, you know what I mean? Like People need to have a little bit more of a sense of humor with all this stuff, too. Yeah. You know? You can take stuff seriously and still laugh at it as well. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Yeah, seeing each other's faces is important, man. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that happens here. Yeah, that uh, mm-hmm. is just shut down, man. Whenever you have your mask on, yeah, and uh, it's just it really it 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 affected everybody so much, man. Right, and there's still a lot of those people that are just freaked out super hard by it, and uh, it, it's like a worm in their brain now. You know, they'll mm-hmm. be wearing a mask till they fucking die. Right, yeah. and uh, yeah, and that's you know their decision as a human being, man. You know, but uh, I feel like it's kind of like the media influence has just really climbed inside their brain. It's, yeah. You know, well, it's it, the polarized division, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that whichever way you look at it, you know, because once again, going back to like, you know, I, 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 I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. Disclaimer. Doctor. I, Disclaimer right now. I we are cannot, not doctors. We are yeah. not scientists. I can't do basic subtraction and addition without a calculator. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so how am I going to like talk about what, you know, the CDC says, right? Like, I don't fucking know. Yeah. But it's also like, you know, what happened to my body, my choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think that everyone just needs to be able to, uh, you know, live, laugh, love, as, as <laughs> us whites <laughs> like to say. Yeah, go to Target, you guys. Just go to Target. Uh, no, man, I think that we need so that. True. I think we need that, like, that unabashed positivity of, like, yeah, you can you could be peaceful and unmerciful. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you can have both and, like... We we need to get back to that like civil disobedience again. Yeah, I mean that and the sense That's of That's what like, this country community. was founded on, man. <laughs> you know? Fuck your tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, true. And it's uh it's just uh it's it's an it's it's pushing people towards that though, is really what's what it takes, you know. Everyone got so comfortable and then we were all just in love with our golden chains, mm-hmm. hanging out, watching Netflix, having mm-hmm. all of our shit delivered by Amazon and just getting fat and sassy. Yep. And, Everyone's uh, getting rich making a one minute video or fifteen second video on something. Yeah, yeah everybody's more concerned life. with their social yeah. media status and like how can I get the most likes, you know, and it becomes some form of currency, you know, some social currency right. that we have now. Yeah, and, like remember the guy that was uh, skateboarding to the uh, Fleetwood Mac song with oh cranberry man. juice, yeah. and then everyone went out and tried to make their own viral video just so they could get a car. Yeah, <laughs> <Right>. yeah, <laughs> right. It was like, hey, you guys, someone's got to go to work. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. I'm hungry. Someone's got to wait my table. It's like yeah. someone's got to farm, man. You yeah. know, that, those totally. are the people who don't give a fuck what side of the fence you are on, man. Yeah. You know, right. the farmers, mm-hmm. they're up there just, they're feeding the whole country, yeah. waking up at the crack of dawn, just getting the hard work done. Yeah, man, they're like, you hey, know? you guys like food? Yeah. Like, right. someone's got to make food for us. <laughs> <laughs> we can't all just sit there and go, me, sa, la, 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 la. Yeah. Or whatever their dances on TikToks and all that stuff. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, but the more they take away everyone's rights and the more they force everyone to just, like, conform to this bullshit tyranny mm-hmm. that's been going on, the more people are going to start standing up like we always do, you yeah. know? It's like uh, human nature. You'll get pushed so far into a corner, and then all yeah. of a sudden people are like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
I remember what it was like in the 90s. They didn't have any of this bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you doing to me here? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, inevitable, man. I don't. It's never worked in the history of humanity. You I, just can't control people. I think I would just like to say to people who want to get viral and go famous on that, you have enough time in the day, in the week in your life, to work a 40-hour work week and still do the viral stuff as well. Yeah. You know, there's enough time in the day, <laughs> you know? I mean, or get an OnlyFans. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. But there's also enough time in the day to have a real job and do your OnlyFans. That's true. That's you know, true. As we can tell by all these nurses with OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> they got to they gotta pay their bills too, man, mm-hmm. you know? They need health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> They all lost their fucking jobs, you know, because mm-hmm. they watched everybody get sick from that vaccine shot. And now they're like, I don't think I want that thing. And they're like, you're fucking fired. Who cares what you did the last two years? Tiffany, you're a great nurse, but I saw your only fans and I just can't look you in the eye without an erection now. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I'm going to pay 20000 a month to you to just keep taking your clothes off and you have to quit working here now. <laughs> yeah, I did just see an article about that, right? They paid some chick 30, 20, 30 grand in severance and just Maybe. let her go because they... They found her OnlyFans at the office. There's oh, wow. yeah, there's been a yeah. few articles of that, like teachers, nurses, yeah. and stuff like that. And they're just like, well, you can't work here anymore. No, yeah. uh, uh, it's like that's like, why are you looking, buddy? Yeah, <laughs> you could have just let me do this and not said anything. And we all could have been fine. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, Tom, how did you find my OnlyFans? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I thought it'd be a good opener, and then you'd ask me out on a date because uh, you need money and a sugar daddy. <laughs> God. <laughs> well, see, first I went to your Facebook, and then I found your Instagram link. And then from your Instagram link, I kind of stalked your, your profile for a while. Then I found your OnlyFans account. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, all right, and yeah. I'm the one in the wrong. Cool. Uh, You're a different girl with your hair down and tequila in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like, if you want to get paid to show off your body, man, go for it. Hey, I man, would. I'm all for it. Yeah, Dude, right? like, there's those... There's, someone would pay me... To- <laughs> hey, 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 no. no, I mean, like, there's those chicks who, like, now... um what's it called? Twitch is like a big thing. You yeah. Know what I mean, and like there's those chicks who just like sit in a waiting pool with a bikini on all day and they just get paid. It's like, dude, I'm okay. I'm for that. Like, Hey man, if that works for you and you're making a living, like, dude, you have figured it out. <laughs> I like, <laughs> you know, the like, best so- ones are the girls that sit there and they're like really, like really cute girls or women and all that stuff. Of course they're of age, but they're just sitting there eating and people yeah. will pay to watch them eat and they'll pay like, mm-hmm. Hey, I want to see you eat. A sub sandwich today, and they'll like, pay for right. the sub sandwich, dude. It's it's <laughs> it's forty dollar forty dollars every ten minutes for sub sandwiches. Oh, uh, you know? that's yeah. America, right? More there. power yeah, to that's you. beautiful. Honestly, right. Is what that is. You know, if you can if you can do that at home, but you know, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, definitely get that Plan B going. Get on uh, what's it <laughs> called, University of Phoenix, and start spending right. the money on yeah. a degree. It's something because you're gonna turn forty and no one's gonna give a fuck exactly. what sandwich you're eating. Because yeah. if you're making your mortgage in two hours. Yeah. You have enough time in your week for a 40 hour a week job. Yeah. <laughs> and your lunch break, you're getting paid as well, obviously, because you're eating for money. <laughs> See? Now I'm just handing out ideas now. Yeah, man. This is, uh, you're just cracking eggs mm-hmm. of wisdom all mm-hmm. over everybody, bro. Just planting the seeds, man. Planting the throwing seeds. them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, so we still have a band, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think, I think yeah, so. Absolutely. This is what happens, you know, we get comfortable and yeah. just start talking shit on the podcast. I love it, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, fucking A, man. Why don't we, uh, call it? It's been an hour. Fuck yeah. You know? Oh, really? Just, yeah. I try not to push it all the way. I can do I can do two hours on this thing, and I was doing a lot of those. And then everyone's like, that's a long-ass podcast, bro. <laughs> yeah, That's a long fucking podcast. I, right. I ain't got two hours. I was like, watch the first 10 minutes and give me a view. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Help a brother out, man. Just hit the button and yeah. next, man. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, let's get the hell out of here, yeah. man. You guys, uh, you guys got a show coming up March 10th mm-hmm. at Soul Belly Barbecue with Wizard and Stoner. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, they, everybody can check you out at uh, Killfeather, kkillfeather.com. Mm-hmm. And you also got the Spotify. You got all the social medias, mm-hmm. the Facebooks and the uh, Twitters and the Instagrams and... Uh, what else? What else do you guys got? Pending on there, only fans account. Pending we, only fans account. We got the uh, oh, music Mike's videos up on sandwiches for everybody. Oh, exactly. So many sandwiches. Who wants to see me eat hot salami? <laughs> How long can Mike eat hot salami? Uh, One hour, two hour. Who knows? Does he chew? You'll find out next. 
on oh, that's man. a lie I'm gonna say four subscribers and they're all gonna be <laughs> ghost accounts that I make <laughs> <laughs> anyways but yeah we also got the YouTube with our music videos for um, once in a while that was filmed and recorded at 11th Street and then of course uh, the one we talked about was um, safety dance and actually fun fact uh, uh, the band Men Without Hats and the lead oh, yeah. singer reshared our music video and cover when we put that out. He shared Did it. Did they his really yeah. shared it on his personal Facebook and shared it on the band's Facebook? And I want to thank you very much for that. And uh, yeah. Oh man, we Middle- did we did people who died. For Howard Stern, and we got oh, a cease yeah. and desist for that music oh, video. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. We didn't even use any of their lyrics or anything. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, we rewrote it all for people that we knew that would die. <laughs> so the whole song was completely a different song, you know? They still cease and desisted us. They're going to sue our asses over that cover. That is the Hollywood, least, baby. Yeah. least punk rock thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? I was like, man, that's a bummer. We yeah. really had fun making yeah. that thing. Man, Sirius XM is paying the bills. What the fuck you got to complain about? Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous, man. Well, Dude, but thank you so much for having us, man. It's always yeah. a blast getting to see you. And, oh, yeah, uh, bro. I'm sure I'll see you at work soon. Yeah, <laughs> we'll definitely be I'll seeing see, each other at work, I'll man. see you around the office. Yeah. Making people happy, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, going out there and putting mm-hmm. on the shows. We it's, work hard so the people that work hard can be entertained. That's right. It gives purpose, man. Mm-hmm. Meaning at the end of the week. Exactly. That's what I always say. I think it's one of the most important jobs out there. Otherwise, what the fuck are we doing all this for? If we exactly. can't go out and enjoy ourselves. We are all here to be of service to other people. Hell yeah, man. That's 100%. the truth. That is the truth. Mm-hmm. Service to others, man. Hanuman. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyways, man. Let me do the thing I do, which is uh, thanks for watching my show. Love you, bud. You know, uh, subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, follow me on social media, follow these guys on social media. Uh, and yeah, hit us up on PayPal, Patreon and all that stuff as well. You know, give us money, keep supporting the cause. Peace for Ukraine. Peace for Ukraine. Absolutely, man. Give life to live music. Yes. All right. Let's get the fuck out of here. Cheers. Peace. Peace. Thank you for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here.